Hello, you fine internet folks. We're here at Supercomputing 2024 in Atlanta. And, of course, as always with Supercomputing, brand new Top 500 just released. And we have a new number one, El Capitan. As you guys probably know, but I'll give you a bit of a rundown since there's some new information here. El Capitan is powered by AMD's MI300A APU. Now, this is not just a GPU and a CPU with shared, mem uh, shared memory addressing space, but this is a fully unified APU, just like you would see in a laptop, except much on a much bigger scale, right? This thing has 24 Zen 4 cores clocking at up to 2. Point, so, excuse me, 3.7 gigahertz and 228 CUs of CDNA3 that can have a peak engine clock of 2.1 gigahertz. Now, the way that the, that MI300A is built is that you have six GPU chiplets and three CPU chiplets placed on top of four base dies with 256 megabytes of SRAM. And this SRAM is acting as the last level cache for both the GPU chiplets and the CPU chiplets, which means that the 128 gigabytes of HBM3 is a single NUMA node. It's all addressable by all the different uh, chiplets in the system equally. What this means is that you can significantly reduce stuff like mem copies, and you don't have to worry about GPU and CPU memory addressing uh, the same cache line and overriding um, and, and having to wait for different um, memory addressing, right? This can significantly, this can reduce programming complexity as well as increase per performance uh, in certain applications. And that 128 gigabytes of HBM3 is running at five point, gives the system 5.3 terabytes of memory bandwidth. For LCAP or El Capitan, this these MI three hundred A's are put into a four node system with three hundred and eighty four gigabytes per second of bandwidth per direction to uh, peer to peer. So that's in between all of the MI three hundred A's for a total of seven hundred and sixty eight gigabytes per second of bandwidth uh, within the system bidirectionally. Then, uh, building up from there, you have two nodes in a blade, um, and those blades each have eight 200 gig slingshot 11 NICs. And the way that that's split is that there's four slingshot net NICs per node for a total of 800 gigabytes per uh, gigabit per second of bandwidth per node or 1.6 uh, terabits of uh, bandwidth per blade. And building up again from there, there's a total of 11,136 nodes for 5,568 blades in 87 compute uh, cabinets. This gives El Capitan an R max of 1.74 to exaflops of performance in uh, high performance LIMPAC or HPL. The R peak of the system is 2.792 exaflops uh, per second. And the power draw of the system is was recorded at 29.6 megaflop uh, megawatts um, of power. Now the R max to R peak um, ratio may not be great, but El Capitan was not designed for the best HPL performance. It was designed to run workloads for the National Nuclear Security Administration. Uh, these are simulations for nuclear uh, warheads as well as inertial confinement fusion and uh, high energy physics uh, simulations. Now, El Capitan is not the only MI300A system on the top 500 
uh, for this list. And at number 10 is the unclassified uh, smaller sister of El Capitan called Tulamine, or Tualamine, excuse me, Tualamine, at number 10. And that has 208 petaflops of R max performance in HPL and is um, keeps the tradition of Lawrence Livermore having a unclassified version of the big classified supercomputer so that the public can access and run uh, simulations and applications on that system. Then at number 20 and 49, we have El Dorado at Standia National Labs, and we have RZ Adams, which is a third Lawrence Livermore system. Um, and uh, Tuolumne, El Capitan, and RZ Adams are all different systems, completely separate, with separate networks. However, not all MI300A systems are here in the U.S. There is one system in France, the Ad Astra 2 system, which scored number three on the green 500, which is the cousin list for efficiency to the top 500. It scored 69.1 gigaflops per watt, and number one was taken by JEDI, which is a test system for the upcoming European exascale system called Jupiter. And Jedi and Jupiter are powered by NVIDIA's GH200 superchip. And number two is also another GH200 superchip system, the Romeo 2025 system. And Jedi and Romeo scored 72.73 gigaflops per watt, and Romeo score, scored 70.91 gigaflops per, sec, per, uh, gigaflops per watt. Have to read off my notes. It's uh, lots of numbers. Aurora also made news. This is the Intel supercomputer that was long delayed, but has since come up and running. And it now has the number one spot in HPL Mixed Precision, beating out a new run from Frontier, where Aurora got 11.6 exaflops of compute, and Frontier got 11.4 exaflops of compute. And as for the, the last but not least benchmark, HPCG, um, Fukaku still holds the number one spot for the fourth year in a row at 16 petaflops per second. Now, El Capitan did not run HPL Mixed Precision or HP HPCG because the Lawrence Livermore team wanted to get the system up and running and running their applications as quickly as possible. Uh, HPL is a very good system test, so it, it's very good at stressing the system, making sure that the system is working as you intend. But um, yeah, they they chose potentially we may see mix the HPL mixed precision and HPCG numbers in the future. Wrapping up, this year's second top five hundred list has many exciting uh, announcements. But let's not forget for the rest of SC24 here in Atlanta, in the Georgia World Congress Center, there's the exhibit hall just, just uh, in front of me, which is going to be massive. Can't wait to get on that show floor and check out all the booths or as many booths as I can. Um, and if you happen to be on the floor and you see me, please come up and say hi. Uh, I'd welcome it. Um, but I think that will end the video. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. It helps the algorithm as much as I have to shill it. But uh, yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching and have a good one, y'all. See ya.